know if faith was a type of sport, which one would it be? What do you think? On broadcasting this, the Olympic closing ceremony is on, and it's been a summer of sports. There are so many types of sports. Welcome. Thanks for connecting. As we think sports, we also think of God's promise. God said to Abram, look up into the sky and count the stars if you can. That's how many descendants you will have. And Abram believed the Lord, and the Lord counted him as righteous because of his faith. Welcome, and let's worship God. Let's pray together. Gracious and loving God, as we gather in your name, we thank you for your promise to be right among us. Help us to believe. We know you are here, as you are in every moment, every place, every occasion. Help us believe and go with us always. Day by day, you have been by our sides recognised or unrecognised, remembered or forgotten, believed or not believed, our response to you has varied. At times we thought you were dead, we've looked for you among the dead, and we've disbelieved witnesses to your vibrant life. Yet your love has always been faithful to us, all loving, always true. Meet with us now and go with us always. Forgive us where we've not responded to your life-giving love. Forgive us where our faith was weak, where it was pushed over by life's events and fears. Now build us up on the steady rock of your love. Help us to be as faithful to you as you are to us. Help us to enjoy your living presence, not only now, but in every moment of our lives. In the name of Christ who taught us to pray together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Very early on Sunday morning, the women went to the tomb, carrying the spices they had prepared. They found the stone rolled away from the entrance to the tomb, so they went in, but they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. They stood there puzzled about this, 
when suddenly two men in bright shining clothes stood by them. Full of fear, the women bowed down to the ground as the men said to them, Why are you looking among the dead for one who is alive? He is not here. He has been raised. Remember what he said to you while he was in Galilee. The Son of Man must be handed over to sinners, be crucified, and three days later rise to life. Then the women remembered his words, returned from the tomb, and told all these things to the eleven disciples and all the rest. The women were Mary Magdalene, Joanna, and Mary the mother of James. They and the other women with them told these things to the apostles. But the apostles thought that what the women said was nonsense, and they did not believe them. But Peter got up and ran to the tomb. He bent down and saw the linen wrappings, but nothing else. Then he went back home amazed at what had happened. Jesus Christ, our living Lord, we believe you keep your word. Whatever may befall us, stretch your solace, we'll trust your voice to call us. Jesus Christus, Mesterünk, mint ígérted légy As Jesus sat near the temple treasury, he watched the people as they dropped in their money. Many rich men dropped in a lot of money. Then a poor widow came along and dropped in two little copper coins worth about a penny. Jesus called his disciples together and said to them, I tell you that this poor woman put more in the offering box than all the others, for the others put in what they had to spare of their riches. But she, poor as she is, put in all she had. She gave all she had to live on. In order to get people talking, someone suggested to me, if you are in company of dog lovers, ask them, if God were to be a dog, what breed of dog would God be like? And then people can talk about the merits and characters of different dogs, their favourite topic, and talk about God at the same time. I can recommend that approach and I want to do something very similar with you just now as today the closing ceremony of the Olympics is happening featuring more than a hundred performers including acrobats, dancers and circus artists as Tour de France, golf and tennis tournaments have happened. Let's think if faith was a specific discipline of sport in your mind what would it be? and why? To you, is faith like, for example, wrestling or surfing or rhythmic gymnastics? Or is faith like archery or athletics or wrestling? Or like BMX freestyle cycling? Or like field hockey? Or weightlifting? The Olympic discipline I feel I personally understand least of all. 
is equestrian dressage. So I would struggle to see how equestrian dressage is like faith, but somewhere else I have found this story. A man got lost walking in the desert. After two weeks, he sees the home of a missionary. Tired and weak, he crawls up to the house and collapses. The missionary finds him and nurses him back to health. Feeling better, the man wants to escape to the next town. On his way out of the back door, the man sees that horse. He goes back into the house and asks the missionary, Could I borrow your horse for a ride? The missionary replies, Of course you are welcome to, but there is a special thing about this horse. You have to say, Thank God, to make it go, and Amen, to make it stop. Oh, not paying much attention, the man says, Oh, okay, that's fine. So he gets on the horse and says, thank God, and the horse starts walking. Then he says, thank God, thank God, and the horse starts trotting. Feeling now really brave, the man th says, thank God, thank God, thank God, thank God, thank God, and the horse just flies off. Pretty soon he sees a cliff edge coming up, and he's doing everything he can to make the horse stop. Whoa! Stop! Brrr. Finally he remembers. Amen! And the horse stops four inches from the cliff edge. Oh, relieved the man leans back in the saddle and says, Thank God! This was the most qualified I could say about equestrian treasure. So let's just move on. Could faith be described as being like marathon running? Unlike other endurance events, at marathon running you cannot rely on your horse, your boat, your bike or any other piece of equipment. You rely on your body, mind and soul working well together. In training and discipline, you choose your own tactic for speed and pacing yourself. You nurture your hope you will achieve your aim. Even though you won't know until the end if you'll make it across the finishing line, you go forward in faith into the unknown. Only then will you know how well you have chosen to run your race. And I find that's just like Paul wrote. What we know now is like looking into a dim mirror. But when we go home to our loving creator, then we shall see clearly. And faith is looking forward in order to achieve the best. Any athlete is full of the belief that the race can be won. Faith indeed does not rely on equipment. The people of faith do not rely on wealth or achievements. So we do not puff ourselves off, up with pride. We want to share what we have as much as we can. There's a long history of service and humility in our faith. Treading easy in order to go far. What about 10 meter platform diving? Is faith like diving? I need to overcome nerves jumping off a 3 meter high board feet first, let alone 10 meters head first. It is very hard to overcome fear, to overcome self protective instincts, and instead to trust and make the leap of faith. Maybe that's why Jesus said we need to be like children to reach the kingdom of God. To make the leap, we need to relax into it. In that sense, in faith, a deep trust is essential. An easygoing trust that all will be well. But we know, like with athletes, 
it also benefits greatly from discipline and training. I would claim that the routine of training, the at times repetitive exercises, are there to warm us up, make us flexible, easygoing and confident. So the leap of faith is not painfully new, but just simply exhilarating and breathtaking. Jesus meets a father who is pleading for his child to be healed. Have pity on us and help us if you possibly can. Yes, answered Jesus. If you yourself can, everything is possible for the person who has faith. And the father at once cried out, I do have faith, but not enough. Help me to have more. That moment is the man's leap of faith to trust Jesus and ease into receiving healing and more faith. Desperation and ease are never any closer. This father faced Jesus in person. Did that make it easier to put his faith in Jesus? What about us then, who are much more distant in time? I tell you, even Abram, long before Jesus, trusted God's promise that Sarah and him would have as many descendants as there are stars in the night sky. Such a trust is faith. We all know the reality of evil, either as the violence of people, or war, or events like illness and disaster. They are out with our control. Faith does not eliminate the hard impact of evil, which is still a reality in our world. Athletes jumping off 10 meters know the water will be very hard on impact when they hit it. But faith gives us both trust and discipline. Faith can turn enemies into friends and faith knows a brighter future. Faith has vision for a better world. Now, could faith be like hammer throw? In this athletic field event, heavy weights fly over a large distance. When we face evil, it makes our head spin. The weight is so heavy that some athletes give out loud shouts when throwing the hammer. This discipline reminds me of the song Onward Christian Soldiers marching us to war with the cross of Jesus going on before Christ the Royal Master leads against the foe. In faith, we fight not against people, but against evil. Was it not Christ who gave an almighty shout on the cross? Was it not him who threw the greatest weight? Because Christ has gone ahead, not behind. We are not alone in this heavy discipline. We read today about Easter morning, when the women found the grave empty and had to be told they were looking among the dead for Jesus who is alive. Their shouts, he is alive, made the foundations of hell quiver. The apostles did not believe, but Peter started a faith discipline of running. He too saw the grave empty and was amazed. Amazed. I had asked, what Olympic sport does faith resemble and why? And I found, training and discipline do help. But even more important is trust, giving the confidence to go forward in faith. Why? In the second Bible story we read today of the widow's two little copper coins. Jesus reminds us it is not always gold that matters. We do not need to put in what we do not have. All we were asked is that we put our whole self in. And that is exactly that leap of faith. And by the amazing grace of God, everyone 
can do that. And that way, the last may be the first. Let's pray. Living God, we pray for all those who find faith hard or impossible, those beset by doubt, burdened by questions which seem without answer, feeling unable to take the leap of faith and yet seeking and searching a sound spirituality that can give strength. Gracious God, we pray for all who wrestle against you, God, for those who knowingly act against your will, who kill and exploit and abuse, who ignore the poor and needy, who victimise and terrorise the vulnerable, confront them with your searching presence. We pray for all for whom you, God, seem silent, who cannot hear your voice. We pray for all who feel their prayers unanswered, for those afraid of the world around them. We pray for all to whom so many things in life seem stacked up against them, those battling illness of body or mind, those lacking self-worth, those experiencing loss, those experiencing racism and other prejudice. In quiet prayer, 
We now name them all before you, those who are known to us and those unknown. Living God, break through the hurdles of doubt and unbelief. Open the hearts and minds of all who are troubled and confused and all who are close to your presence. Meet with those who find it hard to meet with you and lead them to a living, life-giving faith. And whenever we can bring people into conversation with and about you, our God, we pray we may be humble tools in your guiding hand. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Amen. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like compared faith to different disciplines of sport and now we go back into our daily lives and there in our daily encounters with people and situations we love and serve our Lord Jesus Christ. May the blessing of God the Creator, Christ the Redeemer and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you and those around you now and always. Amen. Take this moment, sign and space. Take my friends around. Here among us, make the place where your love is found. Take the time to call my name. Take the time to Yes.
still.